Welcome to the latest instalment on Donegal's geology and physical geography. I'm on top of Mina Roy Hill in central Donegal today and behind me I want to show you a landscape that dates back to the last ice age. This is Donegal's version of the tundra. Now spring always arrives late to this part of the county and summer leaves very early. So what we have here is a, is a landscape that is left over as a result of ice moving off the mountain ranges you see behind me down into this region gouging out huge tracts of the landscape as it went like a bulldozer and leaving behind it areas of scorched cleared rock that have now been populated by trees over the past 12,000 years and then eventually those trees in the last 4,000 years have turned into bog. Now in amongst some of these hills that have been scoured clean you've also got the geological remnants of that movement of ice called tillites. Tillites are geological deposits made up when the ice scraped different rocks off the top of mountains as it went along and created sands, gravels and muds that eventually got compacted very very tight into some of the smaller hills that you would see in the distance here. Those are called Drumlin Hills. Now this section of Donegal doesn't have many of them. You normally find tillites occurring in bands instead of actual hills. But behind me here in the valleys you would get those tillites occurring where the ice went down into a hole in the rock and then filled it up with deposit after deposit. Now, today the interesting thing about this part of the county is the fact that its landscape is still very similar to what would have been here at the end of the last ice age nearly 10,000 years ago. The trees that we see behind me here have been recently planted but at various different times the hills behind me would have been completely covered in greenery which of course is where the bogs come from themselves. The bogs are the latest geological deposit in the long long list of ice age after ice age and dry period after dry period. These are representative of a damp period of extreme growth followed by one of decay which leaves the bog behind. Today now the bog is still used by humans as a fuel source. The past six or seven hundred years they've been cutting bog on top of this hill. But what is under the bog is still the remnants of that great big movement of ice. Now at different times and, and different ice ages we've had the ice move in different directions and that's very difficult to track particularly because the bog in areas like this is so thick it covers the physical evidence you need. The physical landscape itself if you get up high enough to a place like Mina Roy and take a look over it you begin to get a much much better picture of what was going on and where the ice was actually moving. Here what, we look, what we're seeing is ridge after ridge with troughs that contain river valleys. One in particular just to the south of us here would be the Finn River Valley uh, stretching across the, the north section of the Blue Stack Mountains. It was an area of rock that was gouged out by the ice as it moved. Oddly enough instead of heading for the ocean which is to the south of us here it was actually heading northward out into the North Atlantic and as it did so it scraped the top of Mina Roy and everything with it down as far as the Letterkenny Basin and then on out into the open ocean. I'm going to show you a few more uh, of those tillites I was mentioning earlier on up close as well as showing you some of the uh, river valleys from the headwaters of the rivers themselves, in particular the Finn River Valley which is not too far from here. This is one of Donegal's youngest geological deposits. This is the, the brown peat that covers the top of many of the hills here uh, up above a certain elevation about 150 meters up above sea level you start to find very thick deposits of this material. This is left over from thousands of years of successive growth of trees and plants on the hills that have then decayed in the damp environment that existed after the ice age and built up into this layer of compressed dead plant matter. Now left for long enough this would actually produce coal. However it would need to be covered over with another layer of tillites and then go through the process of geological sedimentation for extreme pressure and some heat is applied in order to produce coal out of this year. It would only end up as a very very thin band. Whereas now what I'm sitting on here and what I'm sitting next to is probably about eight feet deep. You can see there's lots of little root systems that are coming off the plants that are growing on top of the bog giving it another layer as they die off. But further down you can find little bits of tree. Now this is a piece of bog pine and it's, it's very easy to chip away and put my finger through it. You can find oak preserved in the bog, turned black by the acids in the bog itself, that is in excess of two to three thousand years old and in some rare instances even older. Now 
in some parts of Donegal we can actually you can find bog oak by the roadside and bog cuttings like this here but most of the time it is pine and at one stage that shows particularly for if you analyze the pollen and deposits like this you can see the growths of different types of trees as they arrived onto the island of Ireland for the last 10,000 years in some instances where I'm picking up the bog pine from here pollen tells us that most of the countryside would have been covered in pine forestry. I want to show you one of the features in this particular area which is a glaciated lake. There are two glaciated lakes at the feet of the mountain behind me here. One of them is the uh, headwaters of the Finn Valley, that, uh, the Finn River that I was talking to you about earlier. Now, this one spawns another small river that goes off into one of those gouges in the landscape created by the ice. I just want to bring the camera over here for a second just so that you can see the extent of it. Now, glaciated lakes are often quite deep and the unifying feature among them all is that they're very elongate. They stretch along the base of the valleys. And the reason for their existence in the first place is that the ice that came into the region took huge chunks of rock off the top of the mountains and used them like the gouge on a bulldozer and tore in to the land, into areas where water would then later on settle. Now the very first waters to occupy these lakes would have been meltwater from the glaciers. And over the years, they themselves have been frozen and particularly harsh conditions during winter time. In some cases, they were so frozen over that in, in recent years, people have actually been out driving on them, which isn't advisable at the best of times since the ice can get quite thin on these lakes. It's very unpredictable. So, the lake behind me here uh, has a depth, an average depth of around 30 to 50 feet, where in some instances it can go down hundreds of feet. And particularly, these lakes are also an indication of another feature, a geological feature, which is fault lines. Very often what happened during the Ice Age was that cracks that already existed in the rock were exploited by the ice, carrying these stones, and gouged out and widened. Now it's the same principle for, for, for the formation of a U-shaped valley, where the rock is gouged out by the ice on a massive scale. But here, these are small, these small lakes are usually sitting on top of a small fault, coming off a main one, and it allows you, it gives you a little indication of how to read the landscape and see what's under the surface as well as on it. So, one feature, as a result of geology, has led to another feature, which is a result of physical geography. The two go hand in hand. If you understand one, that'll give you a key to the other. So, the rocks behind me here aren't actually uh, igneous or sedimentary, they're metamorphosed. They're old mudstones, sandstones and limestones that were laid down in successive beds. Again, these mountains that we're in, in here now are between two larger mountain ranges uh, made of granite. And all the rocks that you see behind me were baked very, very hard. Now, this gives rise to a number of geographical features, including caves. And Donegal has cave systems, they're relatively unexplored. And in a landscape like this, it's possible to find the odd small cave where the limestone in a particular band of rock has been eaten away by water over the years uh, to, to create the hole in the ground. And some of these hills do contain those. One easy way of checking to see whether there's limestone in the landscape is to look at look and see what humans have done with the rocks. Not too far down the road we passed an old lime kiln which was used by farmers years ago to break down the limestone using heat to spread it on the land as a fertiliser. That's a clear indication without having to look even at the look at, look at the rock that you're dealing with an area that has limestone in it. So there's a few there's a few little things as you go through the landscape and you take a look at it use your detective skills to find out as much as you can not just by looking at features such as the lake but other things that, that, that human beings have done in particular as well. And we're down in the main section of the Finn Valley here, uh, just on the outskirts of Bally Buffet, and behind me is the Finn River. At this stage of the river's life cycle, it's already widened out into a fairly slow-flowing, depositing river. And what you notice about the surroundings behind me here is that they're very green, very verdant. There's an awful lot of nutrition in the soil. The reason for that is partly due to the river, and also partly due to the action of ice, moving material off the mountains and depositing mineral-rich uh, detritus inside the valley basins. The result of which is that you've got in the glacial till you've got rocks that give off an awful lot of minerals that leach out and turn into soil that's very very good for growing things. So further down the valleys the richer the soils get and the more greenery is produced as a result. Now the Finn River is still following the line of a fault that was gouged out by the ice finds its way all towards the ocean. The Finn Valley then empties out as it goes from here, from Bally Buffet, further on into areas like Stranorda and then eventually out past into the, the, the Foyle Basin. It's 
going from one fault system to another that has been exploited by the ice to create this, this path towards the ocean. So while the river over time will deviate a little here and there, it will mostly stay in that area that the ice produced for it uh, during the ice age. So that gives you a little bit of an indication of what you're looking at in physical geography terms and, and the forces that work to form the base of the physical geography that we're all living with here in Donegal. And from myself and from Claire who's braved the elements filming this with me. Thank you very much for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye.